lecture i am going to talk about elementary digital signals there are basically three types of uh, uh, elementary digital signals namely unit impulse then unit stamp unit step and then unit ramp in fact these two are elementary signals okay sometimes unit ramp may not be considered uh, as an elementary digital signal now let us take unit impulse okay uh, one of the simplest uh, discrete time signals is the unit impulse sometimes called uh, unit sample or uh, unit signal these are the different names one can call okay it is denoted by del of n okay so the most elementary signal is the del of n okay and it is defined as del of n is equal to 1 for n equals 0 and 0 for n not equal to, n is not equal to 0 so del of n is equal to 1 if n equals to 0 and 0 if n is not equal to 0 this is a definition okay so in other words its diagram will be just uh, one sample of amplitude occurring at occurring at n equals 0 this is n okay and it is 0 on either side uh, let's say at 1 it is 0 at 2 mm, let me say this is 1 this is 2 2 3 4 5 like this so on either side it is 0 but exactly when n equals to 0 its value is 1 okay so its amplitude is 1 occurring at n equal to 0 n is equal to 0 and it is 0 on either side this is the most elementary signal that one can think of it is also called a digital impulse why is it called a digital impulse because we have a analog impulse signal that is why this is also called a digital impulse signal okay so if you compare with the analog impulse del of t uh, is quite complicated because del of t the definition is different and it is you know little complicated it exists at uh, t equals to 0 your del of t your analog um, impulse function it exists uh, del of t exist at t equals 0 only and the amplitude there is infinitely large okay i don't know what is the amplitude at this point so people will say infinitely large now this infinity large when somebody says infinitely large then it doesn't mean anything okay so you must define it without uh, you know proper finite value then there is no use of it therefore otherwise you know if you don't uh, you know define it then the function will be useless for us so del of t is defined uh, as like uh, you integrate from 0 minus to 0 plus times uh, dt then it is equal to 1 that means what this is the area under the curve under the curve and that curve area under the curve is equal to 1 so this creates a lot of problem because it is not a function in the ordinary sense okay therefore del of t is not a function in the ordinary sense because in the ordinary function if you substitute the you no know, value then you'll get if in the ordinary sense let's say some 
y of t is equal to t like this you substitute some t value then you'll get some you know value like y of 2 is equal to 2 like this you'll get some value but the same thing is not applicable in del of t therefore del of t is a not is not a function in the ordinary sense that's what i mean okay so it is an unlimited function and okay so the amplitude cannot be defined it can be defined only in terms of area however there is uh, no such problem in a digital signal very simple okay here you can simply you can write del of n is equal to one you can write like that so there is no in, uh, integration not like that it is a you know ordinary function so the amplitude is one at n equals zero and is zero everywhere everywhere except n equals n equals to 0 so it's a very simple function okay combination of simple function give rise to a digital step function before that uh, let me um, complete this unit step unit impulse function so interchangeably uh, the unit impulse is called a unit sample function okay either you can call unit impulse or unit sample function so this is just a single sample occurring at n equals to 0 del of n is just a single sample occurring at n equals to 0 the term impulse is uh, no used okay is uh, borrowed uh, is a borrowed um, the term impulse is used um, okay borrowing the terminology from continuous time signal okay in continuous time signal also we have a impulse function so therefore here when i say impulse and this term is borrowed from the its counterpart from analog signal it doesn't mean that um, the value of this is infinite at n equal to 0 if I, somebody says impulse discrete impulse function it doesn't mean that uh, del of 0 equal to infinity okay but there it it uh, means infinity therefore del of n is finite at uh, n equals 0 okay so impulse perhaps uh, the word impulse perhaps uh, is a kind of uh, misnomer okay misnomer because uh, still we call it a unit impulse because it corresponds to what we have as a unit impulse in the continuous time case continuous time signal okay so it is denoted by del of n so that's all about your uh, unit impulse function okay now let us move on to digital step function why i am putting this word digital because we have a you know um, analog uh, unit step function so that is why digital unit step function so this is denoted by u of n right and this is just like a unit step uh, function in the continuous time case here also we have unit step okay it is uh, denoted by u of n now this u of n is a signal which is one for uh, so n greater than or equal to zero as i said n takes only integer values it will not take any real numbers real values it takes only integer values so if you plot this function then it is everywhere it is taking constant value like this 
so let's say this value is 1 so this is the notation of uh, sorry this is the definition of your u of n and uh, when n less than 0 it takes all zeros when n less than 0 which is equal to 0 when n greater than or equal to 0 greater than or equal to 0 look at this equality symbol therefore uh, u of n is equal to 1 so the definition is as goes like uh, u of n is equal to 1 when n is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 when n is strictly less than 0 okay so in contrast to the continuous time case here at uh, n equals 0 we have a definite value okay so in the case of you know continuous time case we don't know what the value is because there is a discontinuity so sometimes people will say you know you take 0 or you take 1 or you take the average of these two like one half like that but here there is no ambiguity in discrete case it is very clearly defined but in continuous time case yes there is this ambiguity okay there is some confusion so either you should take a 0 or 1 we don't know okay here at n equal to 0 we have the definite value and the definite value is 1 so but as far as the unit step in discrete time case is concerned the value is definite and equal to 1 when n equals 0 ok so now you can think of uh, the relation between u of n and delta of n see this u of n contains there are uh, you know many impulses so this imp see mm, yeah let me draw the figure one more time so I have the impulses like this the impulses keep on goes like that it goes up to infinity let's say 0 1 2 3 4 5 like this and this is a n okay n and uh, this one is u of n now you take this one you take this pulse alone this pulse alone then this pulse alone how do you write mathematically this is like a unit uh, impulse you consider this pulse alone at n equals 0 unit impulse sitting at where sitting at t equals 0 so how do you write mathematically it is del of n that is it you know the definition of del of n del of n is equal to 1 when n equals 0 and 0 when n not not equal to when is not equal to 0 so therefore this pulse I am going to write as del of n and what about this pulse what about this pulse this pulse this pulse also again I can uh, you know think of as a impulse but now the impulse is delayed by one unit therefore this one I can write as del of n minus 1 right so it is delayed by one unit of time and what about this guy this guy this guy i can think in terms of delayed version of an impulse by two units of time so therefore del of n minus 2 right then what about this one this one is delayed by three units of time so del of n minus three units and so on so forth this one is del of n minus 4 all are unit magnitude therefore my u of n is equal to del of n plus del of n minus 1 plus del of n minus 2 plus del of n minus 3 plus and so on so forth therefore in compact form you can write u of n as sigma let's say k is equal to 0 
it goes up to infinitum it's a running sum del of n minus k you substitute different values you substitute k equal to 0 you'll get a del of n you substitute k equal to 1 del of n minus 1 substitute k equal to 2 then plus del of n minus 2 and so on so forth like that so therefore this plus y this plus comes because of the uh, summation okay so you can uh, you know uh, think of the unit step function as the summation of delayed version of many impulses infinitely in many impulses so put k equal to 0 you get a del of n so del of n describes this guy this guy Okay, so then put k equal to 1, then you will get del of n minus 1, that del of n minus n is described here. Similarly, del of n minus 2, so this is del of n minus 2. So, u of n is very simply related to del of n minus k. So, del of n can also be related to u of n. How is it related? Just now we have seen how u of n is related to del of n. u of n is equal to summation of del of n minus k where k is equal to 0 to infinity. This is one relation. Now the next question is can we represent u of n in terms of um, no I am sorry can we represent del of n in terms of u of n that is the next question okay obviously fortunately the yes okay the answer is yes and we can represent because we know that del of n is simply only one sample of amplitude 1 at n equals 0 and all the rest are 0 therefore we know this this is your uh, u of n it goes like this u of n 0 1 2 3 4 and this is n and for minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on its value is 0 right so this is u of n what is u of n minus 1 delayed by one unit of time so sorry this will not come so it has pulses from here it starts from at n equals 1 to goes here is 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and this is 1 2 3 4 like that it goes now how do you describe this one delayed version of u of n by one unit this is u of n and uh, this one is u of n minus 1 now what you do is you stop you subtract this u of n minus 1 from u of n so if you subtract term by term you will uh, get like this now at n n equals 0 here the amplitude is 1 and here the amplitude is 0 1 minus 0 you will get a, an impulse like this and here the amplitude is 0 and here also the amplitude is 0 and this one and this one if you subtract then you will get 0. Similarly here it is 0 and at n equals 2 both are 0 again you get 0. And here at n equals 3 n equals minus 3 and here also at n equals minus 3 both are 0 0 minus 0 you will get 0. So all these points in the left hand side all are 0. But let us look at the right hand side for positive n then you will come to know that here the magnitude is 1 and here also the magnitude is 1 when n equals 1. So 1 minus 1 0. At n equals 2 the magnitude is 1 in u of n and here also 1. So 1 minus 1 it becomes 0. So like that for all values it gets cancelled. <coughs> so <coughs> you left with the only one impulse only one signal that is located at n equals 0 
and for rest of the values it is 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 and so on so forth. Now your del of n is equal to u of n minus u of n minus 1. So this is the relation between u of n and n of n. This is the second relation. Okay. So obviously one can write del of n is equal to u of n minus u of n minus 1. The next signal is of course the ramp signal. <coughs> that ramp signal is denoted by unit ramp like uh, in the continuous time case be denoted by r of t and here I am going to denote it by r of n. Strictly speaking I am supposed to use uh, no a square bracket but um, sometimes I am not following this consistency. Some authors are using the square bracket and some authors are using this you know normal bracket. does not matter but anyway we will try to use a square bracket as much as possible. So, R of n is equal to um, n when n is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, 0 when n is less than 0. It is strictly less than 0 and here greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, now if you try to plot then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Now look at this. Mm. When n equals 0, the signal amplitude is 0. When n is less than 0 for negative values of n, the value is always 0 for all values of n. Only positive values it has. When n equals 1, you have unit amplitude of 1. When n equals 2, 2. When n equals 3, when n equals 4 like that it has. So if you look at the slope, the slope is going to be 1 because in the y axis this point is 1, this point is 2, this point is 3 and this point is 4. At n equals 1 it is 1, at n equals uh, 2 the value is 2, at n equals 3 it is 3 at n equals 4 the value is 4 and so on so forth. And in fact this r of n you can write in some other way also like um, you know in terms of delta of n and u of n. Okay. Mm. Let me take uh, a sequence like this. Let me consider one example. In this, I have a you know finite length sequence like this. Like this. When n equals zero, zero it is zero. When n equals minus one, zero. When n equals minus two it is 0 and n equals minus 3 it is 0 and so on so forth. When n equals 1 its magnitude is 1. When n equals 2 its magnitude is 2 and when n equals 3 its magnitude is 3. I have only 3 non-zero magnitudes and remaining all are 0 magnitudes. So it has only you know non-zero value over only finite duration right finite duration it has non zero values therefore this is called a finite length sequence 
you can call finite length signal also but predominantly for the discrete case people will uh, use the term sequence instead of signal you can also call finite length signal but uh, in digital we use sequence that is more appropriate word okay so now how do you express this guy using del of n and x or u of n the first one is its magnitude is 1 1 times delayed version of 1 unit so del of n minus 1 and at n equals 2 again you have an impulse but delayed by 2 units so del of n minus 2 and its magnitude is 2 and the third one is again delayed by 3 units del of n minus 3 but the magnitude is 3 okay therefore x of n is equal to like this del of n minus 1 plus 2 times del of n minus 2 plus 3 times del of n minus 3 so we can express x of n in terms of deltas x of the same x of n can also be expressed in terms of u of n how do you express x of n you can also write like uh, like gate function as I mentioned in the previous lecture you can write u of n minus u of n minus 4 then you will get okay so this is uh, a gate okay and that gate is from 0 to 3 so if you want you can you know plot if whenever you have some doubt no you just plot it so like this like this 0 1 2 3 and this is what this is u of n and the left hand side is all are 0 that's how we define the unit step function now i need to find it u of n minus 3 shifted by 4 units so this is 4 and this is 5 so when n equals 4 then it starts like this and for 3 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 and so on so forth the values are zeros okay uh, 4 5 6 7 8 and this one is u of n minus 4 how can you say this is u of n minus 4 you can substitute uh, n equal to let us say 3 then what will you get u of n ma u of uh, 3 minus 4 u of 3 minus 4 is minus 1 what is this argument what is this argument the argument is negative if the argument is negative then your step function is going to be 0 now suppose you substitute n is equal to 4 then u of uh, 4 minus 4 0 and 0 is a positive number if the argument is positive then you have a non-zero value that non-zero value is its magnitude 1 that is why this function is u of n minus 4 now you subtract u of n sorry u of n minus 4 from u of n then term by term you, you subtract see this is 0 sorry that is 1 and this is corresponding value is 0 1 minus 0 1 uh, let me draw the figure here mm. like this then at n equals 0 you will get a pulse right at n equals 1 again you will get a pulse like this up to 3 you will get it but afterwards it becomes 0 why and this side also 0 because at n equals 4 I have 1 and here also I have 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so that is what you get 0 here and here the magnitude is 1 and here also it is 1 1 minus 1 0 and so on and so forth and this side this is 0 and this is 0 so you get 0 here this is 0 and this is 0 so you get 0 here this is 0 this is 0 0 minus 0 0 but here this is 0 this is 1 and this is 0 1 minus 0 1 and here 1 and here 0 1 minus 0 1 and here 1 and here 0 1 minus 0 1 so like that so therefore this is a 
gate function it, it is in the form of gate okay so the gate is from 0 to 3 and now the given signal is in the form of like this mm, one minute when n equals where is it yeah when n equals 0 0 when n equals 1 1 at 2 2 at 2 3 it is 3 like this now multiply this and that right so this is going to be 0 1 2 3 and here also 1 here also 2 here also 3 therefore if you combine these two guys then it is n times u of n minus u of n minus 4 okay when n equals 0 the whole thing is 0 so you will get uh, this one I am sorry okay when n equals 0 then the whole thing becomes 0 so you will get 0 value when n equals 1 you will get this one 1 times and here also 1 here so here also one you will get one therefore this signal is written like this n times u of n minus u of n minus 4 4 you substitute different values okay n equal to 0 then 0 into anything it is 0 so you get back this guy okay this one you substitute uh, n equal to 1 in this equation 1 times u of 1 minus u of n uh, 1 minus 4 minus 3 right so 1 times u of 1 is 1 minus u of minus 3 negative argument 0 so 1 minus 0 1 1 into 1 it is 1 so you are getting 1 here now substitute n is equal to 2 then 2 times u of 2 minus u of 2 minus 4 minus 2 again the argument is negative so this guy becomes 0 and this is 1 1 minus 0 1 2 times 1 2 so you are getting this 2 okay now substitute n is equal to 3 then in this equation 3 times u of 3 minus u of 3 minus 4 minus 1 since the argument is negative so this guy is going to be 0 and here argument is positive it is 1 so 1 minus 0 1 1 times 3 3 so you are getting this 3 that's it okay so that's all about uh, you know unit ramp functions so as we said uh, del of n is equal to u of n minus u of n minus 1 okay and this is called first difference of discrete time step first difference of discrete unit step function why is it called a first difference you have taken n and here you have taken only one difference one u of n minus one since you have one then it is called first in case if you substitute u of n minus two then it is called a second difference if you substitute u of n minus three then it is called third difference and so on so forth so here since you put one here u of n minus one then it is called a first difference okay one more uh, relation we said that uh, u of n is the is equal to summation over k is equal to um, zero to infinity del of n minus k please remember this and this is called a running sum of unit impulse running sum of un sum of the unit sample or unit impulse whatever it is sometimes people will call unit sample function
okay so now let us uh, try to relate um, you know discrete time signals and uh, continuous time signals so this unit step function and delta function also has some property okay so if we have x of n multiplied by del of n then this is equal to x of 0 times del of n you can easily prove this okay um, if we consider more generally a, a unit impulse del of n minus n suffix 0 this is delayed version of delayed version of del of n by n naught samples ok so now x of n times del of n minus n suffix 0 is equal to x of n suffix 0 times del of n minus n naught and this is called a sampling property of the unit impulse ok now this is used very much in sampling okay so that we will discuss a little later now let us find the relations among del of t then u of t and uh, r of t that i already stated uh, in the previous lecture but we will uh, you know discuss in detail now we said uh, u of t is a unit step function why is it called unit step because it jumps like one unit of height ok so it is unit step function at t equals to 0 so there is a discontinuity here ok so the unit step is discontinuous at a t equal to 0 it suddenly jumps from 0 value to 1 value Okay, and uh, one more uh, um, definition that I would like to state here. Okay, like uh, the continuous time unit impulse function del of t is related to the unit uh, impulse uh, unit step step function in the manner analogous to the relationship between discrete time unit impulse and step functions in the. Uh, discrete time case we said a running integral right u of n is equal to summation of del of n minus k where k is equal to 0 to infinity that is what we said. Now the same thing we can write down here also del of I am sorry u of t is equal to instead of you know summation you put an integration because it is continuous del of tau times d tau and integrate from minus infinity to t and this integral is called a running integral it is very easy to visualize so this is u of t <coughs> running integral of the unit impulse that means what you have the unit impulse the physical interpretation of this equation you have the unit impulse at uh, n equals sorry t equals to 0 that means the area small area mm, you take a small area that is what the definition of your uh, delta function and this with this let us say delta and uh, this height is going to be 1 over delta right so um, now let us say the point is t here now what you do is start from infinity minus infinity to t you are going to integrate so therefore integral of minus infinity to t 
I am putting some dummy variable del of tau times d tau is equal to um, this is equal to 1 let us see how that is equal to 1 for uh, no no this is equal to u of t now what you do is you do the integration from minus infinity to this point let us say this is 0 this point is and up to this point the integration is 0 because the signal is 0 the moment you come across this point okay then there is an area of 1 unit and from this point onwards the area is going to be 1 unit so let me break this uh, you know integral from minus infinity to t like minus infinity to let us say let us say this point is minus delta by 2 and this point is plus delta by 2. So, you do the integration up to minus delta by 2 1 interval and from here minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 1, inter, 1 integral then delta by 2 to t another integral. So, 3 integrals I am splitting now. So, integral of minus infinity to t del of tau d tau is equal to minus infinity to minus delta by 2 del of tau d tau plus minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 del of tau d tau plus <coughs> delta minus sorry delta over tau to t del of tau into d tau right. So, now look at this function from minus infinity to t the value is 0 here ok it is 0 therefore 0 if you put a 0 here then this inter this is going to yield 0 let me use a different color so the first integral is going to yield a 0 now from minus delta by 2 plus delta the function value is 1 over delta therefore integral of minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 the function is 1 over delta times d tau plus from minus delta uh, I am sorry I am really sorry because I wrote wrong um, it is correct only but I, did, I wrote wrongly one, one minute see from minus infinity to up to this point the delta function is 0 therefore the first integral this is going to be 0 plus in this interval minus uh, uh, in this interval from minus delta by 2 plus delta by 2 the height is the height is 1 by delta therefore integral of minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 the height is 1 by delta times d tau plus you come to the third interval third integral in the third integral from delta by 2 to t it is 0 therefore 0 times if you do some integration this is 0 so therefore this gives 0 ok therefore the first integral gives 0 and the second integral you pull out this 1 by delta outside 1 1 over delta integral of minus delta by 2 plus delta by 2 d tau sorry it is not delta what I am using here something I am writing wrongly d tau d tau and the third integral is going to be 0. <coughs> so, 1 by delta and this is tau and the limit is minus delta over 2 plus delta over 2. So, delta over 2 delta over 2 becomes delta if you substitute the limit. Delta times 1 over delta it is 1. 
therefore integral of minus infinity to t del of tau is equal to del of tau times d tau is equal to 1 and what is this this is your e of t when t greater than 0 then it becomes 0 so that is a connection between del of t and u of t okay so if you integrate del of del of t from minus infinity to t then you'll get a u of t signal that means what the signal is zero if you plot the area of these three integrals these three integrals then up to this point the area is zero right area equal to zero now exactly when t equals to 0 that means minus delta by 2 2 plus this delta by 2 is very very small okay so therefore i can assume that it is equal to 0 the moment you cross t equal to 0 then it uh, rises to 1 units of height and afterwards it stays forever okay so this is due to your uh, second and third integration second integration anyway third integration is giving 0 therefore this one is due to first integration and uh, this one is due to second integration of course the third integration is zero you can leave it therefore this indicates the area function okay area of this integral and uh, this resembles like a unit step function Therefore, if you integrate a, a delta function that is equal to u of t. So, u of t is equal to integral of minus infinity to t del of tau t tau. Now, if you integrate you get one function then what is the rel how do you get a del of t from u of t? That is a question naturally arises. What is the connection between del of t and u of t in the reverse manner? because here you did the integration right the opposite uh, operation of the integration is what differentiation so therefore del of t is equal to d times u of t divided by dt therefore the continuous time unit impulse del of t can be thought of as the first derivative of the continuous time unit step here unit u of t is continuous time unit step and del of t is a continuous time unit impulse so the continuous time unit step uh, continuous time unit impulse can be thought of as the first derivative of the continuous time unit step function okay so in in the case of uh, you know discrete uh, time signal what did we say del of n is equal to first difference please recall u of n minus u of n minus 1 first difference and here first derivative that's all first derivative therefore del of t is equal to d times u of t by dt but there is some you know formal dif difficulty with this equation as a representation of the unit impulse function uh, can you see some difficulty in this by the way can you say um, is it correct there are some difficulties actually if you want to take derivative then you can take only for smooth functions the um, left limit must be equal to the right limit but here if you take a you know unit step function there is a sudden jump okay in the left limit if you take it is 0 if you take the right limit then it becomes 1 let's say the point is 0 you take 0 minus the va at t equals 0 minus you get a 0 value when t equal to 0 plus then you will get a 1 value so therefore the left limit is not equal to the right limit so you cannot differentiate in fact okay at, at the point of discontinuity the differentiation is 
undefined because u of t is discontinuous at t equals to 0 and consequently it is formally not differentiable if it if you strictly speaking you take a unit step function like this sudden jump like that then the law 0 at 0 minus the value is 0 because it is 0 here somewhere and let's say this is 0 plus at 0 plus the value is 1 so you know, there is a discontinuous it is discontinuous at a t equals to 0 so this point is t equals to 0 and consequently you cannot you know differentiate we can however you know interpret uh, this equation equation by considering an approximation to the unit step uh, you know uh, u of t like uh, in real time in real time applications you cannot increase or uh, you know jump the value suddenly it takes certain amount of time finite amount of time recall from your electronics from electronic devices or from your circuit theory that the voltage will not rise suddenly it takes certain amount of certain amount of time like this let's say it is 0 volt then suddenly you cannot reach uh, you know plus 5 volts you cannot reach um, let's say plus 5 volts okay it takes certain amount of time let's say maybe some 1 millisecond or 1 microsecond i don't know some amount of finite amount of amount of time therefore it takes this much time. slowly it increases and then it reaches therefore in practical system the voltage increases like this now there is no discontinuity here okay so it is again you can think as like a smooth function more or less slowly it is increasing and then this function instead of calling u of t let me put a u of delta of t and this width no this width is delta okay which rises from you know 0 value 0 volt to the value of 5 volt okay in a short time interval of length delta okay this this uh, length is very short time interval okay it takes short time interval to increase from 0 volt to 5 volt of course when you are talking about unit step then you say it is like a, let's say this is 1 volt and this is 0 volt because unit step it doesn't matter either you take 1 volt or 5 volt or 10 volt but the matter is how long time it takes it takes uh, you know short time interval to rise therefore uh, the unit step changes values instantaneously and thus can be thought of as an idealization of the um, okay u delta of t for uh, delta so short suppose if i want uh, ideal unit step then what you do it should rise like this okay no time that means what delta if delta goes to zero then it sharply rises like this okay so duration doesn't matter for any practical purpose so whatever the system you take it it takes finite amount of time to rise therefore u of t is the limit of u delta of t okay as uh, delta goes to zero let's say delta values as small as possible therefore mathematically speaking del of t is equal to d times u of t by dt first derivative this is no, not correct because at discontinuity you cannot take derivative but if you approximate that approximate delta i can write like this and this is d by dt of u delta of t because it takes some finite amount of time to increase therefore it is 0 0 0 then when 1 when t equals 0 t equal to when t equals 0 then it takes like this so this is 
delta if we differentiate this then here the value is constant so if we differentiate then basically differentiation is the slope of the function so up to this the differentiation is zero but the moment you come here it is a slope it takes a slope so differentiation of the slope is a constant so therefore this one so it is going to be like this like this and this is delta and this is zero and this is one over this height is one over delta let's say this is one and this point is delta okay so this is the continuous approximation to unit step u delta of t and this is the derivative and by the way afterwards look at here from this portion onwards it is constant right so for a constant function if you derive uh, if um, if you differentiate then again it is going to be zero like this zero and this value also zero that's it so this delta of t is the short pulse okay of duration delta capital delta okay and um, again the unit of this pulse is going to be 1 when this delta becomes goes to 0 then the pulse becomes narrower and the height also increases higher maintaining its own unit area so it is a limiting form therefore delta is the limiting form of limiting form of your delta function this delta function okay therefore this is the ideal ideal pulse but in practice we don't get ideal pulse so this can be thought of this del of t can be thought of as an idealization of the short pulse this is a short pulse okay and this is the ideal pulse and this one is short pulse short pulse in the sense it its duration is very short okay because when i say del of t it has no duration but unit area okay so it is very you know um, unnatural in practical systems therefore we take this short pulse with a physically you know realizable pulse okay so that's all about uh, the relations between relation between u of t and del of t and one more point i forgot to tell you suppose if you have a ramp function like this if you take derivative then what will you get you will get a constant amplitude so this is your r of t if you take derivative then u of t d by dt then again if you take d by dt then you get a, an impulse so this is a connection so so r of t d by r of t by dt you will get a u of t then first derivative of u of t is going to be del of t similarly you take del of t if you integrate then what will you get you will get a u of t okay so again you take u, u of t and then if you integrate then you will get r of t so therefore integral of u of t minus infinity to t times mm, no del of t t times dt del of tau d tau is equal to Mm. 
del of tau d tau is equal to u of t that's what we derived and again if we integrate u of t and dt then this is equal to r of t now can you justify how this is happens because u of t is like this with the magnitude of 1 this is my u of t now you are doing the integration minus infinity to t okay so this is 0 and here t is greater than 0 and here t is less than 0 so this whole interval minus infinity to t i will um, break into two integrals so minus infinity to 0 and uh, 0 to t two integrals so minus infinity to t u of t u of tau d tau already have t here so i put tau here it's a dummy variable so this is minus infinity to 0 e of tau d tau plus 0 to t where t is uh, greater than 0 e of tau d tau <coughs> now what is this in this interval it is going to be 0 because minus infinity to minus infinity to 0 it is going to be 0 so the first integral gives 0 what about the second integral integral the second integral is 0 to t in that limit 0 to t it is 1 therefore 1 times d tau so d tau if you define integrate then you will get tau and substitute the limit 0 to t so it is t therefore integral of minus infinity to t u of tau d tau is equal to t only if t is greater than 0 that's what because here the t is greater than 0 so this one is same as your r of t r of t is equal to t when t is greater than 0 greater than or equal to 0 so when you integrate an unit uh, step function in the continuous time version then you will get a unit ramp function okay this is a unit ramp function so let me stop at this point